So it's January 11th, 2012, and I'm sitting here in my office early in the morning on a day that should live in infamy. Today is the 10-year anniversary of the opening of the Guantanamo Bay prison down in Cuba. Now, as Americans, we all need to take ownership and understand exactly what has been happening down in Guantanamo Bay for 10 years. There are certain facts that we all must come uh, to understand. Number one, even today, there remain hundreds of human beings who are locked in cages, captive on that island, many of whom our own government, our military officials, our intelligence officials have released from any wrongdoing. Let's be clear about that. Many of the individuals who are still being held captive down in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, have been cleared of wrongdoing by those who are holding them captive and yet they remain locked in cages, prisoners on an island that they cannot escape from. As Americans, we are all responsible for this. We all must own up to what is being done in our names to human beings and what has been done down on that island for 10 years now. It is another fact as well that our government has engaged in torture of these very same individuals and they have been engaging in torture of these individuals as defined by numerous treaties in international law for more than a decade. Now make no mistake, I don't support uh, any of the terrorism or wars or any of these kind of things, but the fact of the matter is that our country has descended into lawlessness in the name of preventing lawlessness and preventing terror. These things are inconsistent with one another. And today, on the 10th anniversary of Guantanamo Bay, it's time for us all to pay very close attention to that. I want you to read the news articles. I want you to read the New York Times article uh, of a prisoner who was held there uh, for nearly 10 years after being cleared of charges and it being it clear, I think, in everyone's mind that the gentleman did nothing wrong. He's just one of many who had been held and many that are still being held when our own government acknowledges they have done nothing wrong. This is unspeakable. It puts us into a level far above despotic countries like China or Russia or Iran or any other country in this planet. It's simply unacceptable for a country that professes to be a country in a rule of law. Now, that wasn't what I really wanted to talk about this morning. What I wanted to talk about was the rule of laws applied to foreclosure cases, but there are some interesting parallels. One fact that I have been obsessing over on the last couple of weeks is the fact that in the vast majority of foreclosure cases, if the case is properly defended by experienced counsel, it would be very, very difficult under the current circumstances for the plaintiff's to succeed at trial in these cases. Let me be clear about that again. Uh, if a foreclosure case is properly defended by an experienced counsel, it would be next to impossible for many of the current plaintiffs to succeed at trial with that foreclosure case. Now, uh, over the last couple months and years, our trial court judges have uh, been criticized, uh, and trial courts have been criticized by the handling of foreclosure cases. But as you review uh, those trial court cases, and particularly looking at the appellate court opinions, you will see that very few of them are actually opinions based upon trials. And, and that's based primarily on the fact that very few foreclosure cases go to trial. Um, the statistics published out of Florida, uh, July 2011, I think, showed that there were fewer than 100 foreclosure trials in the 2010-2011 period. Whatever the exact numbers are, the fact remains that there are very, very few foreclosure trials that have been conducted in the state of Florida. And as I have done that recently, I have become convinced that when the rules of evidence and rules of procedure are applied, along with the substantive law that applies in foreclosure cases, substantive law being the law of real property, that's the mortgage, and the law of negotiable instrument and paper, and that is the note, when those elements of the law, procedure, rule, evidence, and substantive law are applied to a foreclosure case, 
it's next to impossible for the plaintiffs in the current situation to proceed to trial successfully in these cases. And, and I think the appellate court opinions largely bear that out. The appellate court are directing our trial court to pay much closer attention to each of those areas of law, apply that law just as they would in any other case, and, and when they do so, uh, come to conclusions that they could not grant judgment in favor of the plaintiff. So where does that leave us? Well, we cannot allow the, the legal system or, or economic and, and uh, real property system to completely bog down. So what this should provoke is greater cooperation among the plaintiffs and the defendants in foreclosure cases all across the state and, in fact, all across the country. I've said it repeatedly, and I say it again, I'm not a free house guy. Uh, I believe that people should be living in houses, making mortgage payments, supporting the community, paying taxes, paying insurance, and, in fact, supporting the home that they live in. The fact of the matter is that that is not a message that has been received well by the plaintiffs on the other side. Um, Americans are fully aware of the frustration that their neighbors encounter in trying to deal in good faith with banks and trying to arrive at reasonable mortgage modification terms that we can all live with. But as the banks and institutions who, by the way, are the beneficiaries of the largesse of the very taxpayer that they are attempting to throw out into the street, as these banks and institutions recognize that when they are forced to play by the rules, they are not going to be able to deliver a drubbing or a beating on the consumer that they want to throw out to the street, that should then provoke that they enter into more substantive and good faith negotiations and agreements with the consumer. That's what I hope to see across uh, this state and, frankly, across the country. Um, one thing that I predict is that while over the last couple of years, the banks and institutions, and in fact, uh, the mainstream press and sort of the larger society have been focused on how can we uh, conduct a quicker foreclosure process, I predict to you that what's going to happen over the next uh, couple months here is the banks, the institutions, and the legislatures that they have bought um, are going to recognize that faster foreclosures is not what any of them want. And so an interesting dynamic is going to set up here is as legislatures have uh, their legislation teed up to try and give the banks what they thought they wanted two years ago. Now they're going to try and reverse course, change direction, and in fact come back to the position that I and many other activists and uh, those involved in the system were involved in years ago, and that is a negotiated solution to this problem. In fact, the solutions that they wanted years ago and that they thought they'd been pushing for for years, namely non-judicial foreclosure and ignoring all the rules and evidence, moving foreclosures along to a quicker conclusion, is not at all what they want. It's not in their best interest, it's not in the interest of the community, and it's certainly not in the best interest of our larger society. So, for everyone out there that is stuck in foreclosure right now, I believe the key to your success is a properly defended case from the beginning. Um, to the court system and to attorneys who are involved in that, we have to be working towards a negotiated solution, being part of the problem, and that means coming to the table with solutions. To the borrowers and homeowners that are out there, um, this means cooperating with your lender, and being in communication with your lender, keeping good notes and records of all communication with the lender in the hopes that at the end of the day, uh, we can all come up with some kind of solution we can live with. So, two things to think about. As you sit there in your day all day today, January 11th, 2012, consider what it would be like to be locked in a cage uh, for 10 years. Understand that that's what our government has done and what they continue to do to human beings on Guantanamo Bay. And for those of you, Americans, who are locked in the prison of a litigation system, have faith and have hope. Uh, good counsel and good attorneys, good judges and court system may indeed provide some kind of relief for everyone at the end of the day.